Tanya Shire is a, a very esoteric person. She's a, she's a deep thinker. She's a, she's a transcendental thinker by nature. Very, very artistic. There, there's nothing that escapes her in that, in that way. She deals with metaphor. She deals with symbolism. So she brings a, an ethereal quality to her life, and she brought it to, to Adrian. I saw her the first time, and she had this great beauty. I really fell for her. I fell for her. Over the years, I mean, we've seen each other from time to time, you know, and there's always just this sweetness, this very gentle sweetness about her. To be an actor, first of all, is, I mean, it's an amazing challenge, you know, because, boy, you can get swallowed up by the attendant stuff. And uh, I never got that sense about her, you know? I got the sense of always just talking to the same person, you know, from the first day that we met. First of all, no one knows how funny she is. If she's relaxed with you, with the company, she's brilliant, she's funny. I used to be at dinner with her, I'd fall over laughing. She was so smart and so witty. Again, it was always, you know, it was always the heart. Again, it was it's interesting how that entire group, there, was, there were all these big hearts, you know, and Tally as big as any. She was very, very uh, secure in what she had to do and knew what she had to do. Um, and she knew how to transform herself from this dumpy, uh, kind of maidenly uh, ant role to uh, somebody who turns out to be quite attractive and glamorous at the end. And she knew uh, how to do it in a very short period of time. You have to believe that no one's ever looked at her. You know, you really have to. I often would wonder whether or not she wore glasses that were the misprescription. You know, she could see whether she just decided to wear the wrong prescription. She's the kind of girl that no one would get up in a bus or a subway and say, could you take my seat? And then I began to fill her with the memories. And I thought, where would I pick those memories? Well, high school. Isn't that the worst time for most people who are shy? Yes. And no one talks to you at your locker. No one cares for you. So I built her from high school. I built her from that moment where uh, she was discarded. And then, of course, working in the pet store, all those little creatures. And the bird became very interesting to me. I just think what she captured in that role as a woman, you know, the, the strength and the gentleness, the support, and this person who had her own dream, you know, uh, being a captive and escapee at the same time, you know, all that sort of stuff, how she managed to take these, uh, these traits, you know, and the personality of one character and managed to have them all unfold from the, from the woman in that pet shop. Boy, talk about a metaphor. Sly really put one on her with that metaphor, you know. It was so brilliant on Sylvester's part to set her in a pet shop and knowing his affinity for animals and seeing this girl uh, being so close to these creatures, the birds and the other creatures in the shop. They so represented her personality in, in certain ways, you know, her shyness, the kind of jerky quality, the insecure quality that she seemed to show. And yet, as I say, to me, she was always so beautiful, uh, so remarkable. Adrian just was this broken flower that uh, everyone tended to bypass. And it took a man like Rocky who moved slowly, who, who looks at creatures in a different way and, and saw this beauty in her that other people didn't. He saw underneath the glasses and the, and the hat. He could see something there. And, and Talia, no one can embody that character better on the planet. All right, listen, I'm gonna go now, okay? Listen, I'll see you later, all right? I need you guys get up. I know you had a hard day in the cage, right? So uh, I'm gonna go home, make up a joke. I'm gonna tell you a new joke tomorrow, okay? Good night, Adrian. There are good things that were in that cage. There was humanity and sensitivity to other people. I would say that I don't think I could ever be spoiled. My heart is there with the human struggle and the human mystery. That, that, that is always a part of me. And I think Adrienne, even in her journey,